Mr. Tom Rakeway. Hello, and welcome to the third episode of The Singer's Insight, coming to you again from London. During my debut run of Stravinsky's The Rake's Progress at the Royal Opera Covent Garden, I had the pleasure of working and interviewing my colleagues John Relier and Tom Addis. Not only are they both incredible performers, but also down-to-earth, genuine people. They took a little personal time to sit down and chat with me about life, career, and this truly fantastic opera. I hope you enjoy hearing some of their insight. So welcome back, everybody. Um, I'm here with my good colleague and good friend, John Relier. We're singing uh, Rake's Progress here at Covent Garden. And uh, we're just going to talk for a few minutes about Johnny and uh, see what's going on with him. And uh, hopefully you'll enjoy it. All right, Johnny, thanks, buddy. So Thank um, this is your first time to sing, sing uh, the role, right? Yeah. 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 How first, do you find first it? First Shadow. I really enjoy it. I mean, I, I spent you know, a lot of time listening to Sam Raimi do it right. and really admired his work, but realized, you know, when I did it, I had to do something different with it. Yeah. And I, I love this production of it because we're doing the, this updated kind of 1950s yeah, version. Yeah, so cool, yeah. And I get to, like, really mess you up. <laughs> <laughs> How do you find it vocally, though? I mean, when uh, you were vocally, studying it, you know, musically, yeah, um, it's quite different from other things. So. It's, it's um, you know, it's most often it's done by a baritone, yeah. you know, but uh, I... It's, there's, there's a few roles out there that basses can cross over and do, especially when they're basses that are a little more in the basso cantante sort of bass baritone side of things. Right. Um, what I like about it is like there's so much recitative. Yeah. He gets to really act his part, and you can, and it's not like any different than when you do a recitative in other repertoire in that. You're, you're, you're being parlando yeah. and, and showing your character yeah, off. Yeah, you can really show a lot of the, the character, subtleties you know. during those sections. Yeah. And I think he's a great, a great contrast to, uh, you know, the, uh, to Tom and, yeah. and, and more so than just about, yeah, and, and all the other Faust, Mephisto yeah. kind of uh, Mephistophelian roles. So let's talk about like your, some personal stuff about you too, maybe that people yeah. don't you know know. Um, like you have a family, mm -hmm. and you know two as boys. a singer, you have two boys. Two and, boys, and we travel together as much yeah. as we can. I always like to try to tell um, people who watch the the podcast, uh, you know, kind of what it's like to be a singer. I don't mean just singing on stage or preparing roles, but you know how the life is because a yeah. lot of times people don't know. You know that you're constantly in a damn airport or something yeah. like that you know and it can be a little bit crazy but when you figure a family into it then mm -hmm. things obviously are different yeah. so how do you guys get around it i mean uh right now they travel yeah. with you when they're free from school right yes um i mean we we take them out of school i'd say out of every three months maybe for two weeks oh okay uh, do teachers get mad uh well <laughs> we kind of make it at the beginning of each school year, we make yeah. it abundantly clear to the yeah. teacher that this is our lifestyle. It's not like most. It's not normal. We're fortunate yeah. <laughs> that because the, the school we're in is is more geared towards private schooling. It's, oh, it's okay. uh, semi-private, uh, yeah. for lack of a better term. But it's there are more parents who have self-employed uh, professions right. and don't lead your sort of conventional type of work schedule. Yeah. So in <laughs> essence, the teachers are a little more conditioned to understanding situations like that. You know, how do you fill up your time? Do you have like some kind of hobbies that are not singing? Yeah, or? well, guitar is always the first thing yeah. that I fall back on because I, I played guitar growing up as a teenager. I mean, I played since I was nine. Yeah. Played in bands when I was a, a you know teenager, just like you did. Yeah. And that's uh, <laughs> so that side of me will never leave. You yeah. Know? Also, you know, with yeah. travel, sometimes our schedules are so tight. Mm -hmm. You know, in the old days, someone told me not so long ago. Um, uh, that uh, actually, I was talking with uh, Maestro Bonnie, and he oh, said yeah. that that uh, Dame Joan used to study a role, a new role, two years before she would do it. Amazing. In most cases, I mean, I can't even imagine. I'll be happy with two months. That's like an ideal. It's incredible. World situation. Yeah. I mean, I, 
I mean, obviously not every day for How two years. How many times have we looked at roles that we know we're going to do in yeah. two years and say, I'm going to start like exactly. next month and you're just one gig after the next yeah. and you suddenly find your time is so limited to prepare yeah. them. But, I, yeah. I can't usually study another role in between my performances mm -hmm. because... I can't either. Yeah, it's hard, you know. If you only have two days off, the next day you're quite tired from a show, yeah. and the day before the show and you don't no want to work a whole sing, new role. Yeah. Sing something else into your voice. You yeah. Know? I mean, your repertoire is pretty big, but you know, obviously you did a lot of Mozart stuff and mm -hmm. branching off into other things. I mean, what kind of plans do you have coming up now? Well, you really know, now, the, the, the kind of thing I'm doing is like this. You know, I love to pl play these villains. So, yeah. you know, we've got this, you've got the villains in, in Hoffman. I've, I've yeah. started doing that That's great, yeah. somewhat recently. And, uh, the Mephisto roles. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be doing Damnation of Faust. That's yeah. my next next one. And the Gounod, uh, Mephisto, and uh, the Boito. And my goodness, that's it's almost all of them, I think. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, maybe we're going to sing together again, hopefully sometime soon, and then we'll, we'll do soon. another one and talk yeah. about other fun stuff. So thanks, buddy. Thank you, my friend. All right, man. See you guys next time. Bye. Okay. London again, and uh, we're doing. We're right in the middle of a run of the Rake's Progress by Stravinsky. And today, I'm really excited because I'm going to speak uh, with a colleague of mine who actually is not a singer, but a conductor, composer, and all-around great musician, Tom Addis. Hi. Hi. Thanks. <laughs> anyway, thanks for uh, being here. We just want to chat for a few minutes so people can, you know kind of find out what's going on. I like to let them know what's going on wherever I am. But, um, okay, so you're a composer and a conductor, so what's the story with you? What's what's the real story with Tom? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you start, you, did you start with conducting first? No, or, no, no, no. Oh. I, I composing, and I, I think um, I only started conducting when people would say, I can't conduct this, you know, I write something, and <laughs> right. you do it. So, yeah. uh, so that's how it started. Well, it was just it's too wild, or, you know, they yes. just, yeah. I don't know. I can't remember actually. There was no one else around who could do it. So, um, and um, and I so I never had any kind of uh, lessons or training. Oh, okay. Anything. Now we're doing Rake's Progress. It's such a cool opera. I'm really enjoying it. How do you feel about it? Since it is basically a modern work, and you know you're composing modern works, obviously more modern <laughs> than that. But but uh, I mean, how do you feel about it? Is it something really interesting for you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I love it. It's great. Uh, piece from, it's actually 50 years old or something like yes. that now, but in a way it's kind of, you know, there are not that many great operas that have stayed in the, you know, repertoire um, yeah, from true. that time, and this is definitely one of them, uh, it's almost number one for me, and uh, so it's just nice to get to actually perform it after, yeah. you know, I knew it for a long time, yeah. since I was a kid, and here we are. The only thing is it's more hard work than I Yeah, expected. tell me about it. <laughs> I mean, it's a big. Your role is huge. Yeah, I'm on stage all the time. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But I mean, well. you gotta, you gotta keep you are, yeah. swinging your arms around the whole time. Too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> first time doing this, this opera. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. the same yeah. was that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But I have known it very well for a long time. But there, there's a big gap between knowing something to listen to and, yeah. and you know, actually performing it. Really doing it. You have to memorize it. I mean, yeah. I have the music in front of me. Yeah, it took me a while. It wouldn't stick in my head at first. Sure. I was really like damning yeah, yeah. Stravinsky. Like, yeah, yeah, why yeah. did you do this to because me? Because it's always, it always, he always goes a slightly different direction from what you expect exactly. you know, all the time. And that, and that. So okay, so now tell yeah. us a little bit about like how you, how you are as a person. I mean, forget about music now. I mean, I mean, how are you dealing with uh, when you're traveling all the time, or you know, um, when you when you compose, for example, do you try yeah. to stay home, or do you yeah. have to do it on the road? Um, it's best to do it at home, yeah. because just all my stuff is my studio set up for that. Sometimes when I have no choice, yeah. recently I stopped, um, I started composing, uh, I always did it on the piano composing, and now yeah. I use a kind of keyboard, which is um, pretty standard around the world, so okay. I can um, hire one of these. Oh, I see, and yeah. That's easy enough to do if you're in a, you know, if you're in a place like New York or, right. or LA or somewhere. Um, but it's not that easy if you're kind of in the middle of nowhere middle, or, yeah. or any of that. That's part of our kind of career is that you travel so much mm. and you get to see so many cultures. Yeah, things, I know. think so. So that's why I kind of, if I'm composing, I try to do it here at home so I don't, right. you know. Because I have been, like, the worst time was um, I had been working in LA and I decided oh, I've got six days off, you know, I'm going to go to Hawaii. Because oh, okay. English people 
never go to Bali. Exactly. You wouldn't go. It's as close the, as you can get, it, pretty much. Yeah, you're in LA, yeah, from yeah. there, it's a good time. Yeah. So I did this, and of course, I somehow got in a kind of deadline situation where I actually had to spend the whole six days in Hawaii uh, working. Oh, no. So I was looking out of the window at this beautiful place. I can't even go. Now, that was the worst. I just didn't want that, that to happen again. So now I try and keep it separate. Right. And it's I'll, I'll, so then, okay, when you're not under a deadline and all that stuff, what do you do? You know, what, do you have any other hobbies besides music things? I'm I mean, terrible. I, I've yeah. really kind of tried to do I, One of the things that um, I've always liked, and it's really what we call it train spottering, like it's uh -huh. really kind of, um, I don't know what the equivalent of that would be in America. But well, we had that movie in America. Though. Well, not like a movie, but as in it's a really kind of anorak can I say that? Does that anorak, yeah. It's like sort of not, it's not a glamorous, I like bird watching. Oh, okay. So, um, okay. but I used to do that as a kid a lot. And then kind of, I grew up here in London and I'm very much a kind of city boy. And okay. Everything. So, um, and it's just recently I started kind of going to places where I could do that again. And um, I really, it's brilliant. I can really just do that all day. Wow. You know, it's, fun. it's really peaceful. Yeah. You know, you're watching relaxing. these things. It's relaxing. You're kind of watching. It's quite exciting if you're going to see a kind you've never seen before. But... I always feel that everyone, everyone should at least have something yeah. from, besides their career that takes them somewhere what do you else. Do? Oh, what do I do? Oh, yeah. I don't know. I, mean, <laughs> I, I love military history, for example. That's oh, my wow. thing. I, and really? reading. All the time, I go to, I know, I think in my past life, you know, I was like a general in a war or something. I don't know, maybe not Napoleon, but I don't know, someone, I don't know. But uh, so every chance I get, I go to some of these places that, that have some kind of sight of, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, are you going to be doing any other operas? Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a million dollar question, question for me. And uh, kind of basically, um, when I'm sure I have the right text, Right. Um, I can start to say, okay, here, here, we'll do it for this year or whatever this year. I, mean, right. I think it's, it might be a bit risky to agree like a time and a year and everyone. Yeah. I mean, these things get, as you know, booked so far. In yeah, time. nowadays it's really it's far amazing. in advance. Yeah. Four or five years even more, yeah. and um, which is weird, you know. So yeah. I kind of, I'm more and more like to be the one who says it's going to be ready whenever. Oh, okay. Um, so, but and then yeah. try to plan it from that? Yeah, it's much, safe, it's much safer. Otherwise, you might suddenly find you need a bit more time and there's no way they can move it by yeah. three months or six. It's impossible. Yeah. It's... So, it's, yeah. so, thanks for talking <laughs> to pleasure. us. I think it'll be really interesting for um, anyone who watches the little blog to, um, you know, meet other people who are not always singers. And so, it's really cool. And I really enjoy working with you. I hope oh, we do it again yeah. sometime. It's really fun. <laughs> this is a great production. Yeah, it is. And it's great amazing. show. Um, yeah. And, uh, good luck with everything and thanks for Thank you. Thanks so much. Hi. Thanks again for watching The Singer's Insight. Join me for the next episode from Berlin, Germany, where I sing Gunnar's Faust at the Staatsoper and chat with my colleagues René Pape and Alain Altinoglu. Until then, take care.